what did you think of the of Google or Alphabet Labs, uh, pull, Sidewalk Labs pulling out of their proposal? Um, you know, is there anything that should have been done differently there? Uh, how how would, how are you thinking about that news? Well, there's a lot that should have been done differently. From my perspective, it was just a matter of time before they pulled out because I think they made so many big mistakes so early on. Mm. Um, To have spent $50 million and to have nothing to show for it, for me, that's just mind numbing. Uh, You wouldn't believe what I could do with $50 million. (laughs) Um, And they were on the spin cycle with consultation. Um, I think they made a lot of really, really critical mistakes, which isn't surprising because they aren't developers. And development, urban development processes are complex. And just because you're good at tech doesn't mean you're good at urban development and understand the process of urban development. I think if nothing else, that's what they proved um, on our on our waterfront. They made some really pretty plans. They made some huge promises. It To people like me, when they came out with those renderings, promising um, the Mass Timber Institute, it all looked great, but there's no financial model for it. Then they turned around and said, oh, well, this is what we want to do, but there's no business case for it, so we need the government to pay for it. Well, right. like, yeah, sure, come up with a plan and tell everyone else to pay for it, too. Um, so the minute they started talking that way, I was like, so wait a minute, you're coming up with a plan that has no business case, and you're telling us your plan can only work if the government gives you money. Like, hello, what is that? Right. It'd be easy to make up plans if that was how they worked. Well, yeah. any one of us can make up a plan and then go say, hey, I've made up a business plan, but it doesn't make any money. It's not financially viable. And if the government allows me to tax, then my plan will work. Right. right. What's that line on your pro forma? Oh, that's the government paying us. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. the government making my model viable. Like, whatever. <laughs> And by the way, you've got to give me 12 acres of prime waterfront land on top of that. Right. So right. I was a skeptic from the beginning. I also I, I thought that there was a lot of brouhaha, but I didn't see how it was going to work. And I think that the the biggest mistake that they made, which was an incredible act of bad faith, was when they came forward and said, oh, look, we've got this awesome plan. We're going to get the public all excited about it. But then we're going to say, we'll only do it if you give us another 112 acres. Right. Right. In what yeah. world do you think? <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, I, I, um, I was, I thought there was, I should say, I thought there were, they, they cobbled together some excellent best practices from around the world. It wasn't much that there was new. It would have been brilliant if the Mass Timber Institute was going to take off. But again, it's something that requires funding. It would need to be a government program, was my understanding, the way it was described to me. Uh, I think it would be a great thing to have, and I'm disappointed that that's not happening. But I really didn't believe the rest of the plan. Um, I really didn't believe it was going to happen. So for me, there wasn't a sense of loss because I didn't think there was something there. I kind of didn't fall for it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting chess move that they that they did getting everybody all excited and then having that extra ask. It, it might have worked on a, a with a with a different political body with, you know, uh, another city. I don't know. It might have worked, but I guess not here. So um, interesting. We have a we have a legacy on our waterfront of an incredibly engaged constituency. Um, all the good things that you've seen on our waterfront have become have been because there has been a really, really involved um, community in that planning process. So I would say many of the very best things in Waterfront Toronto's plan actually came from Toronto. They didn't come from Alphabet. They came from us as a city. So I'm very hopeful that we can do something spectacular there still. Um, I think when people say, oh, we missed this incredible opportunity, I would say, but it wasn't real. Mm. Like, obviously it wasn't real or they would have done it, but it wasn't real. So I think that's kind of an unfair thing to do to a city, to make them think they can have something, but only if they'll pay you for it. (laughs) 